This is Duke University. Soon we'll be done with the troubles of the world. The troubles of the world. The troubles of the world. So will be done with the troubles of the world going home to live with God no more This music to me is one of the avenues through which God ministers to us today. Even though music was created during the time of slavery on the plantations, even the slaves expressed their faith, their emotions through these songs. They used those songs as survival tools. Those songs we can still use as survival tools today. And I see it with my students. I see it in my own life. The challenge is, is to reclaim them, the song, as a matter of life and death. It was a nonviolent weapon against the oppression of slavery. For me, it's a, it's a counter memory. It's a way of honoring um, what James Weldon Johnson wrote, writes in his 1922 poem, O Black and Unknown Bards, to, to remember uh, the unknown black bards, the forgot, those um, who were untaught, unknown, unnamed. Well, I think the political significance of, of the Negro spirituals go with, the, uh, with how they were uh, uh, first to form. They come out of the experience of slavery, of people singing about their experience. Their experience uh, is, is really music of rebellion, uh, uh, a steal away, steal away to Jesus, steal away home. My Lord, what a morning when the stars begin to, to, to fall. When the stars begin to fall, what is that? That's the new day. So are they looking for a new day? So all of these are political ex expressions. To recount the history of the, uh, of, of the Jubilee Singers is, is in many ways to recount the struggle of the African-American people. N near the time of the former right after slavery, there were approximately 4 million former slaves in the United States. Of that, only 1 in 40,000 was in some form in college. So on October 8th, 1871, the Jubilee Singers, six uh, female, five males, and all but two of these had been former slaves, set out in a grand tour to raise money for, for, for the school. And of course, maybe they had an idea that reconstruction would not last uh, much longer, so they knew uh, it was time to raise. And so along with Ella Shepard, the pianist, uh, Miss Wells, and we often don't know what her title was, but we know that uh, she was the chaperone, and George L. White, a trustee, set out on what was to be a small tour, but they ended up lasting seven years. So today we have a, a, a unique chance to hear these songs and understand them. Weeping and wailing no more. No more. Being the musical director of the Fifth Jubilee Singers is a very humbling experience when I know that many great musicians have directed this ensemble. But then the legacy of young African Americans who sacrificed their education and even in some cases their lives to go out representing Fisk but with a mission to raise money for Fisk 
and in course of that introducing the world to the Negro spiritual. personally have had and still have a wonderful experience teaching young college students and now high school students about how we can look at the Negro spirituals and make them personal to ourselves. It becomes a source of inspiration to them so that when they are performing on a concert stage they become like the preacher who prepared himself so well with the relationship of the Holy Spirit that when he gets behind the pulpit and starts preaching, it gets to a point where he forgets about his notes and allows the Spirit to flow through him. I hear older generations say we're losing these songs, we're losing this history, the young people don't know it. Questions about hip hop, though I think that whole musical strand, hip hop, back up gospel, blues, jazz, right, the thread goes back to the spirituals as, they, as a spiritual foundation for these you know, various modes of expression. What it requires is for one to be human. And even if one can't um, keep a tune, you can still sing. Mm -hmm. And I think it, there's that wonderful sense, and that's the expression of hope, like Polly Murray, hope is a song in a weary throat. And, I, and that, that's the nature of the spirituals for me. It doesn't matter if you sing flat or sharp, or, but sing, because to sing is to be human. So I ask you to hear the plea of these songs. I ask you to sing along. I ask you to cry with the songs and smile, the smile of a people who've triumphed. I ask you to wake up and shout, my Lord, what a morning, and then reach out and touch somebody's hand, and then lift them as they rise, and ask yourself as Dr. Du Bois did. Is such hope justified? Do the sorrow songs ring true? I think they do. When the opportunity came for us to go back to Ghana in 2007, I was filled with great joy. Uh, it had always been my desire that we would take this music go and sing it in one of the slave castles, which we did. Um, we had to do a recording in that ca one of the castles, and as we were setting up for the recording, some of my students told me that they wanted to go into the dungeons just to see what it was like. As they went into the dungeons, about a minute later, all I could hear was crying. They came back out crying, crying, crying. But that emotion also helped us when we had to sing the songs and record. And of course our prayer was that as we sang those songs in their polished form, we would leave the peace of God on those grounds and in the walls. Uh, having been director of this ensemble for 19 years, I have experienced many wonderful things not of my doing, 
but by God's doing. Um, and I'm just thankful that I am in the position now to be used to keep this music alive, to go out and represent Fisk University. It's a challenge sometimes, but you know, when I think of the beauty of sharing this music with young people, older people, and getting them to enjoy the music, that alone blesses me. Well, all right. Produced by Duke University, online at duke.edu.